Hey guys, you're watching Dance the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a six sided logo using gradients all in Adobe Illustrator. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So you can see I'm now in Illustrator and I've got a new artboard, 1920 by 1080. And there's an example of the logo we're going to create in the top right corner. So first of all, I'm going to go over to my toolbar. This is where the rectangle or ellipse tool normally is. Left click and hold and select polygon tool. And then simply left click anywhere on the artboard and enter six as the number of sides. You can leave the radius set at 50, click OK. And we now have a hexagon, our six sided shape. I will scale this up. Make sure you hold shift when scaling so that it doesn't distort out of shape. Let's make it nice and big. We'll pop that in the center. And if you hover over the corners, you'll see the rotate symbol appear. Just click and rotate, hold shift, and either rotate a 270 or 90 degree angle. So essentially, you want your hexagon pointing up and pointing down. That's these points here. So great, we've got a hexagon. We can just select this and at the bottom of the toolbar, set the fill to none, and then go up here to the view menu and just turn off snap to pixel. By default, both are selected. Illustrator sometimes gets a bit muddled selecting both or trying to snap to both. So if we just turn that one off, just so it snaps to the point, makes this next step a lot easier. So we've now created a hexagon. Next, we'll grab the pen tool and we're just gonna start creating a bunch of different triangles. So let's click, click, and you can see here that snap to point and those smart guides make this this next step incredibly easy, incredibly dot to dot. So now we've created one. Next, we're gonna go select, deselect. You've got the shortcut here, Command or Control, Shift and A, and it will deselect the current selection. So we'll do another one here. And then again, select, deselect. So it's important when you start doing this pen tool step, you don't have anything selected. If something is already selected, and then you try and click on the anchor point, you can see we have a minus symbol appear next to the pen tool and it will start removing anchor points and it gets very, very complicated. So deselecting and then creating those pen tool points is incredibly important. So we're just gonna repeat this. We're gonna create six of these in total. Okay, number five, click, click. <laughs> it's incredibly easy, select, deselect and the last one like so. So the original hexagon that we created with six sides was really just a guide to create these six triangles. We don't need that anymore. Of course, it's gonna be very difficult for us to select that original hexagon now under all of this, but we can go to the layers panel. So I've got mine docked here on the right. If you don't see that, just go up to window and down to layers. Now I can expand this layer and we can see all of the different parts that are made up inside this. We can select polygon. We can see here the tiny thumbnail shows that original layer and we can get delete from the bottom of the layers panel. There we go. So now we've just got these six pieces that we created. So this looks, uh, this looks pretty cool. Uh, we could keep it like this and go for something linear but we're gonna, we're gonna create something a bit more interesting like the example you can see on screen. So let's drag over everything and we'll swap the fill and the stroke around so it's solid black. And we're gonna select each piece in turn and then we're gonna pick a fill color. Now, if you're on an older version of Illustrator and you don't have this contextual properties panel on the right, just go up to window. Let's try that again. Go up to window, down to swatches, and you'll see you have the swatches panel here. I've docked mine on the right. If you're on the latest version of Illustrator, you just go here and you can just click on the color swatch and it brings the same menu up. So it depends how you like to work and what version of Illustrator you're using. So you can see I've created two swatches here already. And if you want to follow along with this exact tutorial, I will add a link to download this Illustrator file in the video description. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give all of these shapes that I've created, alternate colors. So I've just got two swatches at the moment. We'll keep this nice and easy. There we go. Da, 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 da. 
So it looks something like that. Now, it doesn't quite match the example I've created. Some shapes are on top of others, so we're just gonna make a few changes here. So I'm gonna select this one to start with, go to Object, Arrange, and Center Back and Send Backward. In fact, all of these shortcuts that you can see in this menu here are definitely worth learning. So we'll send that to the back. We've got this one here. This also needs to go to the back. This one here, but we need to bring that to the front. And there we go, we've matched the example in terms of the order of shapes. So you can adjust them using that arrange menu, just so everything's in the right order. You can of course do something slightly different if you want to. And now I'm going to click on, well, we'll start with this segment here. And I'm gonna click the gradient tool. And then down from the gradient menu here, again, if you're on an older version of Illustrator, at the top, window, down to gradient, and it will turn on that panel. So there we go. We can also click on this little options icon here and we get more gradient options. So for example, I could double click on the black and we'll add in the darker green here, double click on the white and we'll add in the lighter green. And then we've got the gradient tool here. So what we can do with that tool selected is I can move the position of this I can rotate the gradient just so it matches the orientation of the way I want the gradient to flow. Something like this. And of course you can adjust all of these points in real time. You can go and adjust the, the midpoint if you want. And you can do all of this from the panel on the right as well. So you've got the same options there and you can flip the gradient the other way if you want to. So what we're gonna do next is we've created one gradient this is, uh, this is the nice easy step now. We can select all of the other shapes by holding shift and clicking on them individually. And then if we grab the eyedropper tool over here, the shortcut for this is I on the keyboard, we can then sample that gradient and it will apply it to all of them. And it looks something like that. Uh, it doesn't look great. So what we'll do is we'll click on this one here, click on the options and we'll try swapping this around. And then what have we got? We've got this top one here. So let's select the gradient tool. We'll go in here and we'll try and adjust this a little bit. So we could maybe bring these points in, something like this. So you can see that we can really get a lot more control over where different colors from our gradients appear. So this one here, if I grab the gradient menu, we can swap this again. And you can adjust the angle from this box here as well if you want to. And then I think this middle one here as well, if I grab the gradient tool, again, I'm gonna pull this in, similar to the top one. And if I'm looking at the example as well, I'm gonna open the gradient menu and just swap those colors around. So it just reverses the direction of the gradient. And you can do all of this using the gradient tool, but then you've got the gradient panel there as well. And essentially the last thing I'm gonna do is drag over everything, go to object, group that together, and we can scale this up. You remember you scale holding shift. If you hold down alt or option as well, it will scale from the center. We can make it a little bit bigger. And uh, there we go. We've created a six sided logo all with gradients in Adobe Illustrator. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to download this Illustrator file, I'll link it below in the description. But as always, any questions or comments, you can drop those down there as well. But like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, see you next time.